Good morning everyone. Welcome back to grade 5 mathematics class. How are you all doing today? So we have come to the end of chapter 2. So we'll have a re revision session today. Now question 3 is a word problem. Atul had rupees 28,49,450 with him. He bought two machines. One for rupees 4,78,500 and another for rupees 8,48,950. How much money is left with him? If he wants to buy a third machine for rupees 20 lakh, how much more money will he need? So, uh, in the question, it said that Atul had rupees 28,49,450 with him in the beginning. And he bought two machines, one for this much and the other one for this much. So, the first part of the question is how much money is left with him after buying these two machines. So he had this much money with him in the beginning. He bought these two machines. Now how do we find how much money is left? We have to add these two prices to get the total amount he spent to buy the two machines. Then what do you do? Then you have to subtract that from the amount he already had in the beginning. So that will give you the money that he is left with. Then one more part is there to the question. If he wants to buy a third machine for rupees 20 lakh, how much more money will he need? Let's first find out how much money is left with him and see what we have to do rest. So from the data given in the question, let's write down the steps as cost of first machine equal to then the cost of second machine is equal to now the total cost equal to the cost of the first machine plus the cost of the second machine. So substituting the values will give us the total cost as rupees 13,27,450. Now, now how do we find how much money is left with him? So we have to subtract this total cost from the amount he had in the beginning. Then we'll get the amount left with him. So amount he amount left with him equal to the amount he had minus the total cost. So substituting the amounts will give us the difference of rupees 15 lakh 22,000. Now Atul has rupees 15 lakh 22,000 with him. Now he wants to buy a third machine for rupees 20 lakh which is more than this number. Now we have to find out how much more money he needs to buy that third machine. So that third machine costs rupees 20 lakh. To find out what is the amount of more money he needs, we have to subtract this amount from the cost of the third machine. So substituting the numbers give us the amount of money needed to buy the third machine equal to the cost of the third machine minus the amount left with him. That is equal to rupees 20 lakh minus 15 lakh 22,000 which is the amount left with him. So that gives us the difference of rupees 4,78,000. So that is the amount of money he needs to buy, uh, amount of more money that he needs to uh, buy the third machine. So that was question three. Now let's move on to question four. The price of a second hand car is rupees 4,80,250. If the price of a new car is rupees 2,18,750 more than the price of the second hand car, what is the price of the new car? So, a, a second hand car was bought at a price of this much. Now, if he wants to buy a new car, the price of the new car will be this much amount more than the amount or the price of the second hand car and we are asked to find out what is the cost of the new car if that's the case. So from the question we can write down the steps as the price of the second hand car is equal to how much rupees 4,80,250. Now the price of the new car will be this amount plus rupees 2,18,750. So the steps will be and uh, the price of the new car equal to the cost of the second hand car plus the amount here. So substituting the values will give us the sum of 
rupees six lakh and this will be the price of a new car so i hope this is clear to you now let's see the fifth question now one bundle of notebooks costs rupees 216 what is the cost of 1825 such bundles of notebooks so it is given in the question so this is the price of one bundle of notebooks we have how many bundles 1825 bundles of notebooks we have to find out the total cost of this 1825 bundles how do we find the total cost in this case if you are given the price of just one we have to multiply the cost of one bundle into the number of bundles we have so let's write down the steps the cost of one bundle of notebooks that is equal to rupees 216 from the question now number of bundles equal to 1825 and the total cost will be the cost of one bundle into the number of bundles that would be equal to 216 into 1825 so that gives you a total cost of rupees 394200 so that is the cost of 1825 bundles of notebook now question 6 if the train fare from kolkata to bijapur for one person is rupees 33 then how many people can travel in an amount of rupees 80,223 so here the train fare for one person is given that is uh, 33 rupees 33 now we are asked to find out how many people can travel with an amount of rupees 80,223 so how do we do this one we have a total amount and we have the fare for one person so to find out how many people can travel with that we have to divide the total amount or the total fare by the fare for one person so let's write down the steps the train fare for one person is equal to rupees 33 the total amount that we have is rupees 80223 and the number of people that can travel is equal to the total amount divided by the train fare for one person so substituting the numbers give you 80,223 divided by 33 that will give you 2,431 people as the answer. Now, the cost of a silk sari is rupees 3,445 and the cost of a shirt is rupees 375. What is the total cost of 121 saris and 245 shirts? So, in the question, we are given the price of one sari and how many saris we have 121 saris now we are also given the case of shirt so what is the price of one shirt it is rupees 375 and how many shirts we have 245 shirts we are asked to find out the total cost of this 121 saris plus this 245 shirts so let's find out what is the total cost of 121 saris then add that to the total cost of 245 shirts so let's write down the steps like this the cost of one silk sari is rupees 3445 so cost of 121 saris will be 121 into the cost of one sari right so that is 121 into 3445 which will be equal to 4,16,845. Now let's find out the total cost of 245 shirts. So cost of one shirt is equal to rupees 375. The cost of 245 shirts will be 245 times the price of or the cost of one shirt, right? So it is 245 into 375. So after multiplication, you will get the product as rupees 91,875. Now we are asked to find out the total cost of the saris and the shirts together. So how do we find that one? We have to add up these two products. Let's add these two products. So that is 
four lakh sixteen thousand eight hundred forty five plus ninety ninety one thousand eight hundred seventy five. So 5 plus 5 it is 10 carry over 1 7 plus 4 it is 11 plus 1 12 carry over 1 8 plus 8 16 plus 1 17 a carry over 1 6 plus 1 7 plus 1 8 9 plus 1 10 carry over 1 4 plus 1 it is 5 so what is the total cost of all this it is 5 lakh 8000 720 that is the cost of 121 saris and the 245 shirts together now let's see the next question question number 8 100 apples can be packed in one box can 1 lakh 800 apples be packed in 1008 such boxes so you have apples and boxes and in one box there are 100 apples. The question is, can we pack these many apples in 1008 such boxes? So this question can be approached in two ways. Let's see the first case. Here, from the question, we know the number of apples in one box equal to 100. So let's find out how many apples can be packed in 1008 such boxes. So the number of apples in 1008 such boxes will be 1008 into the number of apples in one box. So that will be equal to 1008 into 100 which gives you 1,800 apples. So yes, we can pack 1,800 1, apples in 1008 such boxes. This we, Here we have done multiplication to find out whether we can pack these many apples into these many boxes. Now let's do the second method. Here, from the question, we have uh, we are asked if these many apples can be packed in these many boxes. So, number of boxes for uh, one lakh eight hundred apples will be that one lakh divided by the number of apples in each box. From the question, we know in one box we have hundred apples. So let's find out the number of boxes required for these many apples. How do we do that? Let's divide the total number of apples by the number of apples in one box. So 1,800 divided by 100 will give you 1,008. So this is the number of boxes required to pack 1,800 apples. So from this method also, yes, we can understand or it's clear that these many 1,800 apples can be packed in 1,008 boxes. Here we have used division to find out the or to reach to the conclusion. So, like I said, this question can be approached in two ways. So, our final conclusion is yes, we can pack 1,800 apples in 1,008 such boxes. Now, the last one, question 9, fill in the missing digits. This one, you have to think and do on your own. The first question is an addition. The second one is subtraction. Here you have the add-ins and you have the sum. We can use the property that uh, you can subtract the sum and one of the add-ins to get the third add-in. You can use that property here. And in the subtraction problem, you have the minimum, you have the subtrahend, you have the difference. Here also we know that the subtraction is done or will be done correctly if you can get the minimum by adding the difference and the subtrahend. So you can use that method to check the subtraction. So uh, we have been discussing about uh, the questions given in the revision station page of chapter 2. I hope all the concepts in chapter 2 are clear to you. Please go through all the topics once again and you have to work out all these questions in your notebook and after that in page number 35 you can see a worksheet please go through that one also and do all the questions from that so uh, we have come to the end of chapter 2 so that's all for today we'll meet in the next class with a new chapter until then bye